Are you going to put the ding in? Yes. So you. So I'll just say ding. No. no. You say ding. I'll say ding. Can you and say we, ding it has on a YouTube? Cage. Yeah. It has a cage. What happens when a corporate America accountant? I wasn't an accountant. He was an insurance guy. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Mortician. What floor, sir? What happens when an insurance man in corporate America meets an elevator girl? Well, on the real watch list this week, we are doing the 1960 rom-com, The Apartment. Welcome to the real watch list plus with me, Joe DiOrio, and my co-host, Debbie Higgins. This week, we're going to talk about the 1960s classic, The Apartment, starring Jack Lemmon as an insurance clerk who's trying to work his way up the corporate ladder by giving out his key. Oh, yeah. And the basic plot is Jack Lemmon is an insurance clerk who is lowly in the company of a million, you know, workers in this in New York City in the 60s office. And he wants to work his way up. And since his personality is kind of shy and he can't get ahead by whatever means. And he's a grunt. Exactly. And what he does is he gives his key to these executives. And one of them is his boss, Fred McMurray, who's kind of like a sleazy mm. opportunist. So he has to stay out of his apartment in all terrible ways because he's so, you know, used by these executives right. to get his way up in the company. But and he does move up a bit. Yeah. Jack Lemmon's portrayed as this kind of like, in our terms, a nerdy, geeky, yeah. like a uh, pencil pusher. Yeah. Typical Jack Lemmon in a way. Right. And he falls for... The elevator girl. The elevator girl. The elevator who's girl. played by... Shirley MacLaine. Shirley MacLaine. And I love your outfit. You're portraying well, Shirley MacLaine so well with you. And because I didn't know if you had your glasses on when you came into the elevator, I have two elevator tags. And this is you me. Know. And this is the character she played, Kubelik, operator. Yeah. She's the elevator operator, Shirley MacLaine. Mm -hmm. So. so let's go into the cast a little bit. Okay. Shirley MacLaine, she plays this darling of an elevator clerk, a single woman in New York City in the 1960s. Um, beautifully filmed in black and white. That's yeah. what I love about it. Me too. And Shirley MacLaine is just going about her business, trying to make, basically ends meeting on a girl living in the city. Yeah. With her relatives. She doesn't even have her own apartment. You Three, want to do the countdown? Two. One flip. What? Oh my God. I love this film. This is, we are no going to go at it. Nothing way. Yelp. No. I'm sorry, I'm really, but I, I'm shocked and I, pissed. I am a film critic of the year 2024. Oh, please. I'm not back in time, and I will do, I will to the, my career destroyed. No, I know. I'm jumping in. I'm jumping in. Okay. Get ready because this. I rate a 10. Cinco, or, Cinco, 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 yeah, well, Cinco. Two times five is 10, baby. Um, I love this film. I think I love this film for many reasons. One, it's in black and white. It gives wow. you the real feel. That's of how it gets its New vibe. Is, you know what? If you were to colorize that movie, like many of them I don't do. I like colorization. Well, I think it would suck. I oh. think it sets the mood. Corporate America is very black and white. Yeah. It's very it's organizational. True. It has a sweet kind of drama to it. He's falling in love with the elevator girl. Shirley MacLaine, I've <laughs> never seen a Shirley MacLaine movie when she was that young. She was sweet. She was actually kind of cute. Not glamorous, but kind of spunky. Kind of the girl you want to know. Um, and of course, the girl back at that time, you look at the Barry. But Jack Lemmon, as you're watching in his role as Baxter, is like not the nicest guy because he's allowing his bosses to fool on around on the Yeah, but I mean, he had no other way. And the thing that's funny about it, he had a really big apartment. And can you imagine what that apartment would cost oh, nowadays? Millions of dollars if you had to sell it. And, and if you had to rent it, He was a lowly it. clerk mm -hmm. and he actually had Well, you could afford place. it back then. Inflation right. nowadays, forget it. And of course, the executives then. could not come. They had to go there because they were all married mm -hmm. and they were cheating on their wives. But I also love this film because it not only was funny, but it talked about issues that I didn't think you would be talking about in a major film with major actors at that time. Mm. Talk about suicide, 
working up the corporate ladder by sleeping around and trying to accommodate help, executives, accommodate executives yeah. by doing whatever you needed to do to get up the corporate ladder. Matter of fact, there's it's one true. great scene where he's next to his fellow clerk and he, the fellow clerk says something like, I've been here for 20 years. How are you so popular? Yeah. Well, of course, he's, he's giving out the this key. This is it, the key. Fred McMurray, I was shocked because I know the Fred McMurray of my three sons. Yeah, that's what we're nice going to get to in the cast. Um, and he played this really... I really felt for this movie. I, I think New York living in 1960s, maybe get a little bit nostalgic because not that I was born in 66. Like, well, what the heck do I know about New Can York I City? just say something but about that? What I love life. as a person who really does not like technology. The great thing about it, you saw men wearing hats, mm -hmm. phone booths, telephone operators, adding machines, typewriters, LP records, elevator operators. The Empire State Building and Lord and Taylor still mm -hmm. might have elevators with cages, but I think everybody else doesn't have elevators like that anymore with a person in them. And the social mores were a lot different. Mm -hmm because now with the misogyny, and if you did that in an office, you'd be like arrested and then Harvey Weinstein out. Mm. Um, so, you know, especially yeah, when Fred fires his secretary, mm -hmm. which was, imagine, she could bring charges up on him now for that. Right, it set the tone of that era. You're getting out of the 50s, you're getting into another decade of change. The change hasn't happened yet in the 60s. Right. So you're still living under the guise of, um, the Organizational Man. Matter of fact, there was a management book written called The Organizational Man, which talked about executives believing that the individual wasn't important anymore. Remember, the United States was built on rugged America, individualism, entrepreneurship. After and the companies war, that were just starting, like insurance companies that were getting big, like Prudential. Right. And the, But there was a shift after the war, being more part of the organization, that the person didn't matter, it was the group that mattered. And that the group, the organization, can make better decisions than the individual. What this book actually found out was, in reality, after in all these interviews with corporate executives, it really wasn't the best way to make decisions. And not having an individualistic look and opinion and viewpoint made things happen where the organization could get away with things because you had these big corporate bosses. Yeah. Now, unless they did something really stupid. Yeah. They could pretty much do anything they want. I.e. sleep around with other women. Yeah. Tell women where they can work and who to, who they can be and where they can work. And I studied management. That's part of my background, folks. You want to look at my background? Whoa. Something new we find out. Yes. I have my master's in public administration. Oh, God, I don't have 39 God. years in film, well. but I do have 30 years in management. <laughs> um, that set the to that era, that decade of the 50s set the tone where you had to basically, to be successful, you had to do whatever you needed to do to walk up that corporate ladder, get the keys to the men's washroom, get the big office with yes. the window. And in the end, without giving away the total story yeah. of the film, um, Jack Lemon Baxter has this contradiction is it really worth doing what I'm doing to get where I needed to go and give up myself, my individualism, mm -hmm. to be able to live out my life? So I loved it. How did you give it a well, five? <laughs> well, first of all, I want to just say something. When you were talking about corporate America, there was a, the scene in it where it opens up. It shows how minuscule his little desk is with all these desks in the room. In order to talk about that, I have to talk about the crew. Yeah. Go Billy on. Wilder directed this film. He was one of the greatest directors ever. And he Some loved, like it hot, some, yeah, like, some it like it some hot, hot, which is my favorite it. comedy of all time. Oh, on that. But his two favorite actors were Jack Lemmon. Mm -hmm. And can you guess who the other one was? Hmm. Okay. Was it Marilyn Monroe, was it? You want a hint? Yes. Sunset Boulevard. Yeah, you know, I'm having what you people William call- William Holden, moment. William oh, Holden. Oh, okay, so Billy Wilder, he, he was a producer, director, and writer. And in the office, there were so many desks. One thing he did that was really cool because they didn't have computers to do this stuff. The front desks were regular size. Mm -hmm. 
with adults. Right. And then as we went back in the room, the desk got smaller with children in suits right. to make it look like it was, you know, infi infinity desk right. world. And, and something I also read was that, was that they also used um, like a like a cardboard or like a like a staging for those desks as you went further back. So like Correct. you saw the children, you saw the little people, you you got this sense of depth. Yes. The sense of I'm It's an optical illusion. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I I loved it. How could you All right. Well, you know why you want to Tell me why you didn't okay. like it. The Debbie's reason... reasons why she didn't Yeah. You know, my contemporaries who all saw this movie originally, they don't like it. And it's a rom-com with her trying to commit suicide. That cheating, uh, drinking, it, you know, uh, like depression. It's real life. Um, it's living in the it city is, too. But is Why that a rom-com? I mean, come on. I think you that was the genius a, you, part of it. Oh uh, yeah, but you, you pulled in okay, that this movie is because you thought this was going to be a nice movie, and then oh wait, right. this is. Let awesome. me tell you what this is too. It's called a triangle picture. Mm -hmm. Can you figure why it's called a triangle picture? Because uh, there's a See, he stumps me when he asks me the seven so, degrees of separation. I'm, I'm going to stop. The only triangle I know is the upside down. A triangle down picture the is three Genuine. characters who interlock, and because of their interlocking, mm -hmm. their dichotomy is completely changed. And that's Jack Lemon, Shirley MacLaine, and Fred McMurray. Yep. But it actually, I didn't find it funny. I thought it was depressing. And oh. everybody that's seen the picture, I don't know one person who likes this film except for you. Me. Yeah. Because it's something that not only I could watch again mm -hmm. and enjoy it, but I think because it dealt with issues that in the 60s you really didn't talk about. And maybe it's a matter of when you see the film, if you saw it back in the 60s or if you saw it today, yeah. you would get a different Well, I sense think if you saw it, the, if the picture swept the Oscars. Mm -hmm. And everybody loves it. It's on the top 100 films on so many lists. But they're not your friends. No. <laughs> but no, I just feel that it was completely overrated. Um, and especially that year. Mm -hmm. Other movies were in the theaters. Mm -hmm. Here's two. Okay. Mind-blowing. Okay. Psycho. Are you kidding me? Spartacus. As it falls off my lap again because of my slippery <laughs> pants. They were, I mean, come on. The apartment isn't referred to a lot anymore, but Psycho? Yeah, I mean, but you know what? Again, wait a minute, wait a minute. We talked about this in our last series of why certain films didn't win the Oscars. Yeah. This is more- They weren't even nominated. Well, it's this is more of an accepted film because of who directed it, who was in it. Well, he's a very, very popular so, director. So I think in that sense, yeah, the Academy is going to like it. Yeah, I'm surprised that they actually accepted a rom-com with some really dark themes. How can you call it? I, I can't I can't call this a rom-com. So when Wilder put out the trailer for this, I don't know if you've this is more of a haven't seen it, seen it. If you haven't seen it, seen it because they actually fool the moviegoer. The trailer makes it makes you feel that you're going to watch a funny I comedy. hate that. I hate that. And I laughed because I go, that's not what it was. But I think to sell it to an audience to go into that movie theater. Yeah, but you didn't have that. to do that because you had the stars of the day. Mm -hmm. Fred McMurray had done Dumb One Day. He was a big star. Jack Lemon. I mean, he was popular from the second he hit his first mm -hmm. film. And Shirley MacLaine, Sweet Charity, all the other things she did. Irma LaDuce. I mean, she was really popular in a lot of movies back then. But I just, I'm sorry. I just can't put this higher because I just... There's no, you know, unbelievable sweeping cinematography. There's no, it's pretty, and I don't even think, I don't think the black and white be. is as crisp as it could I, be. Oh. Look at Dracula. I mean, and filmed in the 30s. Look at that black and white. I love looking at films, especially old films, and saying, oh, I know that guy. I drive yeah. my husband bonkers because I'm always shouting at the TV saying, oh, that's my favorite Martian. Oh, that's Larry Tate from, from Bewitched. Yeah. So, but I always forget their names. Edie Adams, who's the secretary. Mm -hmm. Now, she was married to Ernie Kovacs, who was famous, and he's in a film we're gonna do later on. And we won't tell you what it is, but we'll tell you when she shows up again about her. Mm -hmm. And she was also 
because they advertised cigarettes and cigars on TV. Mm -hmm. She was the Muriel Cigar Girl, wow. which was really cool. She was very sexy. She said, you know, smoke a cigar. And then Ray Walston is in it yes. from My Favorite Martian. Mm -hmm. So here we go from the 40s to the 1960s, where all these actors transferred over into television right. shows, except for Jack Lyman. He was too big because he always continued as a star. Even like Dirty Old Man, think right. about it. He also, went on until he died. But you also have to think that there's a shift movies to television because oh, of yeah. the invention of the television. Right. And how, oh my God, this opened up a whole new genre of actors going away from film, getting into television, and then some getting stuck. And, yeah. And, and typecast. Tip, typecast it into those roles and not able to get out. Yeah. And some made it. But Yeah, but I want to I want to tell you one more tidbit about well, this. Of the tidbit. adapted screenplay, uh -huh. okay? So Neil Simon adapted the screenplay and he made a Broadway show out of it called I want you to sing the song Promises Promises. Guess who wrote the music for Promises Ooh. Promises? Burt Backrack. I love the back that. One of the songs in it that's very famous is I'll Never Fall in Love Again. Mm -hmm. And they were both recorded, both songs by Dionne Warwick, which was Warwick. unreal. Right. And she was a favorite of, of her background. Yes. Well, she sang his songs perfectly. So I don't know. Should I do my watch list now? Roman Holiday, 1953, with Gregory Peck and Audrey Hepburn, two classic stars from the time. Irma LaDuce, another Bear, Billy Wilder film starring Shirley McLean. Okay. And um, Barefoot in the Park, 1967. You'll see Jane Fonda. Uh-oh. Jane, do you think he's trying to? No. Jane Fonda and uh, young Robert Redford. Uh, so that was that. That's a real what? A, if you want to see rom com, that's a rom com. That's a real rom com. And then we have the little shop around the corner with Jimmy Stewart and Margaret Sullivan, which was remade into a Tom Hanks movie and a Meg Ryan movie. Can you guess? Sleepless in Seattle. You've got mail, and they're all example of triangle pictures. So if you want to learn something about film uh -huh. and you want to learn start looking at films and seeing even modern films what's a triangle picture our sponsor for this episode is andy's limo service andy who was part of our oscar date night oscar part two on bold media films youtube channel andy was gracious enough to loan out his limo check out andy not only is andy a great person but he also has some great vehicles. He has this limo that's bulletproof. So like if you're part of the corporate executives that were in the apartment, you could take that and not only be protected by anyone from shooting you, but you don't need an apartment to have your tryst. Find Andy at the information below and let him know that the real watch list, Debbie and Joe sent you. I'm keeping my score of a 10. I love the movie. You have a five. Yeah. Folks, comment below. Are you on Team Joe or Team Debbie? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Comment below. We want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, because I've taken my poll. Thumbs up, baby. Thumbs up. So comment. And also, what do they have to do? They have to subscribe. subscribe. So we're here from Real Watch List Plus, and we'll see you next time. And we're going to continue our series on 60s flower, flower power. power. And there it goes falling again off my lap. Here, here's my card. Oh. It's an old one. Look at you. I'm so corporate this America. Isn't you, it's Ta it's Thos. It's Thos as well. It's Thos's card. Okay. I love my He's a fifth ward councilman, whatever that is. <laughs> How many wards does guys, the place have? There's five. To me, a ward is an insane asylum or a prison. Oh, okay.